All right, welcome back to SF Vortex, everybody. We have made it down to our special Battlestar Galactica War Room, and look who's with us today. Dirk Benedict, who of course played Lieutenant Starbuck, and like he needs an introduction, he is Richard Hatch, you know him better as Apollo. And Anne Lockhart is here, who played the lovely Sheba. And here's the man who made it all possible. He is executive producer and creator, Mr. Glenn Larson. His, the list of shows this guy's done is, would go on and on, but unfortunately we don't have enough time because we're only a half hour show. Let's get to my first topic, here we go. Uh, all right, you ready, Glenn? Yes, Okay. Yes. Today, sci-fi, how would Battlestar Galactica fit in today in the world of sci-fi as we know it now? What do you think? You want my opinion? I want your well, opinion, I think absolutely. I think it would do wonderfully well. We, would it? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it was a show that was a little ahead of its time, especially for television. And uh, it was difficult to do that show on a normal budget of, uh, in that day. But CGI has come along and made it really possible to do all kinds of great things. Richard, what do you I, think? Well, I also think that uh, back then, on network, even Star Trek never did well. And science fiction did not find its really its niche until it got into syndication. And the minute Star Trek came back and made a big hit, all these other series came on. And I think Battlestar today, had we had a second year, we would have been killer. Miss Lockhart? Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. I think that the concepts that, that we were pioneering back then are what you're seeing today. They're, they're, the, same, they're the same shows. We just did it first. Dirk Benedict? All I know is I still fit into my costume. So. <laughs> Let's I get was this way, thing going. I, was, that's I know, I know. The belly I know when we did the show then, I was, I was ahead of my time in that show. <laughs> was this show ahead of its time? And, and, and I was going to say that I thought Ann and I are amazing. We're the only two that hadn't aged. I know. Uh, we, we thought we looked way, great. Hey, hey. I just want to have a cigar there because... Oh. Uh, and it's in the rough for quite a long time, and here's for you, Glenn. It's a Battlestar Galactica it's a cigar, show. is it? Yeah. Yeah. Where's yeah. mine? Wait a minute. Oh, that's Wait right. I forgot my like cigar. It's like hip for late to smoke cigars <laughs> now, you know? Thank you very much. Wow. This is the <laughs> nicest thing you've ever done for me, Richard. Okay, just don't light it up. <laughs> Mr. Lars, let me ask you, how much, Ooh, back in 1978, when you took the show and it pitched it around town, now, Universal passed on this originally? No. Universal, well, they passed on an idea that I had wanted to do. A science fiction idea, and as Richard said, you know, there was no climate for uh, science fiction at that time because Star Trek had had a real shot at NBC, but it, it just couldn't find that larger group. You have to remember yeah. that, you know, s this audience today has grown up with, with science becoming reality mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. uh, are much more comfortable with all the concepts and all right. the movies that really tell, you know, Star Wars came along and uh, and uh, George Lucas harnessed all of these elements in a different way, and it, uh, it, it inspired the networks to take a fresh look at science fiction. See, I, I think it takes, it takes a while to really bond a new show with an audience. Right. And when you get on network television, the stakes are so high, the expectations are so high, that if your show is not doing killer in the first several weeks, they pull it. Now, you know, science fiction, being the genre that it is, it takes a little while to build that audience. And in, in uh, syndication, you have a while to build that niche. You grow your success market by market. And I think that that's really the key. You can produce it for less. You can stay on longer. You can perfect your show. Mm -hmm. It took three years. I mean, we look at Star Trek, realize it was on three years, went into syndication. We were on one year. We were in a shakedown cruise. Any one-year show, if you go back and look at the first year of any successful show, look at that first year, you Absolutely. know it's crazy. A lot of mistakes are made. They're searching. They're trying to find what works, what doesn't work. It just takes time, and we didn't have that time. We managed to cut most of Richard's mistakes out, but you know, there were. <laughs> they, you fixed that in post? Uh, Dirk and I will consider uh, We were working on it. We were there. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you. Okay, let me ask this. Uh, Battle Star Galactic, the strong writing, <laughs> great action scenes. I mean, let's, and, and the special effects were better than Star Wars, I think. They were fantastic. Uh, well, I think it's great hard. cast. I think it's cast. hard to say anything was better than Star Wars. I think they, they did a hell of a job. John Dykstra was a brilliant mm -hmm. uh, How much did innovator. that mean to you back then in 78 when you got a John Dykstra to come aboard? How oh, much did to, that to, mean to, to get a John Dykstra into television was just such an enormous uh, opportunity and a success. Right. I mean, he was just great. Still is. Yeah. He's doing some yes. great he does, cool. he does great things on Batman, mm -hmm. and he's just a mm -hmm. wonderful talent. So, uh, Mr. Larson, how much of Star Wars did that, how much of Star Wars influenced you with Battlestar Galactica? Well, it really influenced the networks to say, okay, science fiction can work again. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that's the important thing. You, you have to have a climate for commerciality. You try, try to sell something when they don't believe it's going to work. Right. Yeah. And Lockhart, yeah. what did this show mean to you? Oh, well, it was one of the most... Um, happy times of my whole life and I've made friends that are still my friends and people that I still see and, and 
Um, as far as the character that I played, Glenn gave me a wonderful, strong woman, and there were not a lot of strong women on television <clears throat> in those days. There were, there was a lot of jiggle right. in those <laughs> days. Yeah. And um, she jiggled good too. <laughs> so it wasn't, you remember? Wasn't, I got, wasn't nobody she jiggled no, like Ann. No, no, like no, that no, she no, didn't no. jiggle, but yeah. she jiggled in a pilot's uniform. Did you like wearing that 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 gun on the side there? I well, mean, every man wants to wear that gun. And I loved wearing that gun, and I wore my gun different than everybody else. I did. I had my own personal little. I wore it just a little lower than everybody else, and it was just my own personal little thing. Oh, wait a second. But I, you know, just to go back to what you'd asked me about. The character of Sheba was such a wonderful gift, and I did not realize at the time how I was influencing people. And I actually met a woman who came up to me and said that, she said, I'm a commercial airline pilot now, and the reason mm -hmm. she wanted to learn how to fly was because of watching me as Sheba. Really? Yeah, wow. and I, I really... And, and I spawned a whole generation of cigar smokers. So. <laughs> yeah, look how that is. This you're the smoking one. frenzy yes, that's going on, I take right. personal responsibility for it. Well, Glenn, <laughs> you know, had something to do with it, having written the character, but I'm I... Old. I he Arnold wrote Schwarzenegger it. said that's where he first saw cigar smoking. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. Influence. Yeah. I read well, the don't you remember we got in a lot right. of trouble with the network before we went on air because the, the cigars were not uh, attractive in a, in a man of my age smoking, and the women would find it... Unappealing. But we gave you those really small feminine Little ones, so mm -hmm. we got away with it. <laughs> you look so good smoking. Girls, you Hold on one second. Smoking, smoking girl I, cigars? I, uh, I think I we have a Cylon side, and i got to take care of this, and then we'll be right back. There's lots more here in the war room. When that's that vortex, <laughs> return. Welcome back to SF Vortex, everybody. We have re reunited Battlestar Galactica's ragtag fleet. That's right. We are still in the war room with Dirk Benedict, okay. Richard Hatch, and Lockhart, and creator producer, the man that made it all possible, Mr. Glenn Larson. <laughs> Let's go to a viewer letter, shall we? It's always a lot of fun. Yeah. This one is from M Michelle Martin. She <clears throat> emails us saying, I'd like to know if the actors have seen the new toys that have come out, especially if Mr. Benedict has seen the new Starbuck toy. No, I I didn't know. You I didn't know they I know they well, brought out so a happens, what, shower sir. curtains and it pillows. It just so and, happens. Yeah. Look at this. Mm. Yep. Let's take the helmet off. Aww, do it. I was the that. body double on that. Look at that Starbuck uh, after a weight like program, it. I think. Look how buffed up. Padded he is. crotch and everything. You know why that good? happened? The, the, you know, the success of the show <laughs> on on the Sci-Fi Channel going back now uh, a little ways and around the world is uh, you know versus caused them to rethink their uh, merchandising situation, so they put those things out in response to the public. So what if this merchandising does incredibly well? And Lockhart, maybe we'll see Battlestar Galactica back on the screen. What do you think? Would you like to see that? Sure. Would I'd you? I'd love to, yeah. You mean I'd tune in to. in my living room and I'd watch it? You know, <laughs> or be yeah, in it? I, no, I, no, I'm, I'm not talking like about bringing wish. you the, the cast back. What do you think, Dirk? Uh, I, I'm, I, I think we it's a good so idea. Much unfinished I, I think it's a stuff very good to idea. Deal with. I want my toy. Yeah, okay. I mean, where's my toy? I want, yeah, where's, where's the, the, where's the, where's the Captain Apollo Apollo toy? Where's the Apollo doll? Apollo doll? Where's the Glenn yeah. Larson doll, for that matter? What's going on? <laughs> Mr. Larson, would you like to see it back? Uh, you know what? I think that the, every show has its its time, and uh, you know, Star Trek was off before it came back and found its real uh, source of uh, you know uh, being a hit. Uh, there seems to be an awful lot of mail hitting Universal these days because I was out there for a meeting yesterday on a show where we're a new incarnation of uh, uh, Knight Rider mm -hmm. called Team Knight Rider, which starts in the fall on, uh, on uh, syndic in syndication, much as Star Trek. And uh, I, it's a topic of conversation that um, if, if they want to write to you, who do we uh, write to? Just write to Dan Philly at Universal Dan Studios. Dan Philly, Universal, the, uh, folks. You heard it. Get the letters coming he, in. He I'm brought you Hercules and Xena, and now he wants to bring you Battlestar Galactica. Terrific. Also, we have this is a big to do uh, a brand new Battlestar Galactica hardback novel called Armageddon coming out this August, mm -hmm. and it is going to update the show 17 yards later. All right. 1980. Does not exist. Uh -huh. That's what the fans told me to say. Uh, well, that was a bad dream. Because we weren't in it. No, that was a dream. <laughs> that, was a dream. that was a bad dream. Oh, that, that was the and, dream. Did and there was one very right. good episode. If Dallas yeah. can have a dream, <laughs> there was one very good episode. That's yeah. a great question, Richard Hatch. Yeah. What was your favorite episode first year? Uh, hmm. I like the Ibley, Count Ibley episode. What was the the, the title of that? Uh, and uh, the gods, something the the the, 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 the God. The hand of the gods. The hand of God was the last. And one. And I like the hand of God too. I like the very much the last episode. Glenn yeah. Larson, favorite episode. Um, 
I really liked, uh, you know, I have to say, they, they were like children, and I have many children, I have nine children, so you, you can never pick one out and say that that's your favorite. I, yeah. I th this was one of the most pleasurable experiences of my life. It's not a show that went as long as Magnum P.I. Or, or Quincy or some of those, but this, there were a lot of personal beliefs in this show, and I, I, I couldn't pick one out without uh, being unfair. Right. Um, Dirk Benedict, I read somewhere that you said that going to work on Battlestar Galactica was like going to Disneyland even better. Did I say That's that? That's not what you told I, me. I read yeah. it. I read it. You know, More well, money. All I it's all a blur except I, the endless stream of pretty girls that seem to be around the place. That's that's. Oh, that must have been. Well, well, I'm from Montana, you know, and we never have but we had only one pretty girl in the state, you know. And, <laughs> And so, and that's she's why not, this she she's not with Dirk. So, uh, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and she wasn't with me. But she, no, it was. It was so. I I remember that. I remember becoming a heartthrob, which was. Uh, that's all I. You know, that was that was a huge adjustment. He's a very shallow What's person. What's it like I'm shallow and shy. Oh, I'm very shallow. Like? <laughs> and thank and the, and the show didn't deepen me either. That's the strange thing. No, my favorite episode was where Fred Astaire played my father. Uh. Ah. It was my favorite experience, and he and I remained friends. We used to go get together every now and then in Beverly Hills and uh, chat. And he was a so I that was my favorite episode. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, something. Uh, you know, we did uh, a show as part of a, a, a little test that ABC wanted to do called 1980, which a lot of us wish they hadn't done. And of course, uh, if Dallas can have a nightmare wiping out something, I, I think we're going to have a nightmare before we come back in the air. Uh, there was a show that Dirk did that was great fun, in which he crashes on a planet mm -hmm. all by himself, yeah. absolute solitude. There's nothing there but a crash Cylon warship, Ooh. and he rebuilds from three Cylons one, so he'd have someone to talk to. And it's oh, absolutely it's great. Oh, that's the I one show. I think we're gonna crash unless I go to a break. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. We're yeah. right back with this wacky crew that from Battlestar Galactica. Show. It's all when SF Vortex returns. All right, welcome back to SF Vortex. We're still in the war room. You guys have a lot of fans. Where can they yeah. find you? Richard Hatch? Well, I uh, just finished a movie called Renaissance, which okay. is going to be out uh, soon. I also, I am writing a Battlestar Galactica web soap on the, Battlestar, on the, uh, Gal on the Universal web page. So Love that's it. going to be coming out in July, and we're also going to be doing some chat groups, and the novel is coming out in August called Armageddon. Mr. Larson, Nightman. Nightman's a great new show. It starts in the fall uh, in syndication. Uh, Tribune stations all over the country. Okay, and Lockhart? Uh, the last thing I did was an episode of Diagnosis Murder, All and right. I bet you the next thing I do is an episode of Nightman, huh? Yes, Dirk Benedict, yes. you have three seconds. <laughs> Just kidding. Which Go ahead. By how, long, <laughs> by how long my career has lasted in Hollywood. Now, that's what my wife used to say. You have three seconds. Uh, What's up? Which is why. There which you is go. Why. That's, that's, that's it. it. Oh, that's that's it. it. Oh, it's been terrific. Hey, hey see you what? next week. Keep the letters coming, folks. See you next week on SF Vortex. See you later, everybody.